England is the only nation that will have a talent like Phil Foden and absolutely have no idea what to do with him. I'm Bruh. tired of all of this standing up at Old Trafford for the Glazers, brother. You sit down and you Bruh. still watch the game, bro. Literally. So it's like, come on, man. Like, they're not leaving. If Owen doesn't get injured, mm. we're talking about him in the same breath as Henri's, R9's and all Ooh. these players. Yo, it's your boy H Black the Source, Harry Pinero. Welcome back to the Inside Scoop. Of course, I'm joined by the one and only my co-host, Culture Cams. And of course, we are winning. We are winning, literally. Uh, it's on the fabric, as you can see. This might be we are winning's next top model, bro. Mm, We're talking geez. about the whamness. You get me? It's just it's just happening over there. It's everything, the look. Yeah. You know what I mean? The scoom's clean and that. You know what I'm saying? Of course, bro. You get me? Obviously, I'm in that primo. Uh, this is that SCS. Well, Sharky's really. But mm. it's just to show the link up that we yeah, got going course, on over man. here. Come on. Um, but yeah, cams, bro. I wasn't here last week. Mm. Guys. Okay. So, <laughs> let me let man know. Mm. If, if someone can edit this with an ether on the, on the, on the background. Mm. These men came here. <laughs> Leas and cams. And showed the streets that there's no one that can pod like these guys. Yeah? <laughs> they brought Algeria and Nigeria together. <laughs> and hey, bro, I wanna say, what an episode. Thank you, mate. I Thank think you. obviously why um, I wasn't here was obviously I was in New York mm. with the boys. We went for a 2K24 launch, yeah? And I think the first person I said to you was, bro, Cam's, it has to be Leah's. Mm -hmm. Because I think his football knowledge is probably up there with the best right now in the mm -hmm. scene, right now, for sure. But you two together is just is, is a madness. But yeah, man. You touched on some topics, you mm -hmm. know, the Sancho stuff. And, yeah. and, and now you've seen how it's gone on, yeah? How was that for you, though? Like, I guess speaking about a player who you've ad admired and mm. so on and so forth, but obviously not happy with how things are working yeah. with him. Like, how was that for you? And obviously, Leah's dropped eulogies. Yeah, bro. Yeah, you know how Leah's goes, man. But honestly, bro, like, people seem to think that we want to get onto these type of players and stuff. Bro, if anything, let's be honest, you have a little bit of a bias towards them because they're from London, because you may have mutual friends. And mm -hmm. let's just keep it 100. That's how it is. But in this field of work that we're in, what do we say? We promise to give everyone the real truth in it. Like, I'm not going to be one of them people that sit up there and don't talk to you. Even about, even if it's Deckers, whoever, mm. I will say if, if this person's had a bad game or if this person's messing mm. around, yeah. I'm never going to sugarcoat it. So, you know, some of my tweets, people are going crazy. Some of what I said on the pod, people are going crazy, but it's just how I feel. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And look, now it seems like, okay, the tweet is deleted. Fine, whatever. Um, they might have had talks. I don't know. They're saying mm. there's all this stuff coming up from the Athletic. Ten Hag is... To set certain training programs for him that he was doing in the beginning, then started lacking. Mm. Whatever the situation is, we're not in the camp. But the most important thing is, if Sancho gets back on the pitch, mm. are you going to perform? Because mm. us as fans, that's all we see. Mm -hmm. We don't see training. My biggest thing about him is that he hasn't performed at Manchester United. Mm. Training or not, he hasn't performed at United. So when he gets back into the team, if he gets back in the team, we know whatever's happening with Anthony, he's away at the moment. Mm. That that There's a lane for you right there, mm -hmm. him or Palestri. If Sancho's a serious guy, you whatever your situation is with Ten Hag, you guys resolve that, you go extra hard mm. and you get into the team and you prove everyone yeah. wrong. You know what I mean? You yeah. you Anthony, you're not coming back, mate. Mm. You are not coming back into the 11. Mm. But I just can't guarantee that with Sancho. And I said yeah. it again with Lies, if this was... Mo Salah, Cristiano, or whoever, they don't really get in this type of trouble. If they, if they, if they were, I would know. Once they're back in that team, yeah, it's, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. They're it's coming wrap. on vengeance, bro. Yeah. Sancho, I don't know if he's got that dog in him, bro. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think the mentality was was something which I've always looked at at players. I looked at, for example, Aaron Wan-Bissaka, who was cast mm -hmm. to the side. It looked like you know he was for personal requirements. He looked like he was even going to leave United. Mm -hmm. Like that was happening. But in the summer, he put his head down, pause. And That's he crazy. literally, yeah, it was crazy. That was um, and, yeah, very was, crazy. Wow. But yeah, he literally focused <laughs> primarily on what it was and which is to be a better player. Mm -hmm. Now, he's a mainstay in the mm -hmm. team. Like, he's probably one of the first players you put mm -hmm. on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the team sheet. So for me, I think with Sancho, we know what type of player he can mm -hmm. be. He just needs to prove it. Not just 100%. for us, but for himself, bro. 100%. It's for himself, innit? Yeah. And I think, like, when, when people like ourselves, who are, I'm, I'm friends with, with the mm -hmm. guy, 
but I want to see you win. Yeah. I think if any and any of my friends or any person who wants to see me great mm -hmm. doesn't push me and doesn't tell me the honest truth, then they shouldn't be around me. Is it Simple as that. And I think we're in this space not to be no one's friends, but to talk about the game that we mm -hmm. love. And I feel like people have too many yes men around them. Yeah, and stuff, yeah. Man, it honestly. happens. It happens in, like, in everything. But it's just like I think for him, why people are so. Um, it's such a conversation. Mm -hmm. Number one, you play for Man United, which is mm -hmm. one of the biggest clubs in the world. But number two, we know what type of player you can you be. Can be. You proved it. It's just about proving it time and time again. Man's that's not been called up. aside from the best. And mm -hmm. we look at like Sancho, who from Euros, Euro 2022 mm -hmm. or whatever it was, or 2021, yeah. 21, yeah. Um, he, was, he was in the team. Mm -hmm. and, and now look at where England are He now. hasn't been called up since. England have a future mm -hmm. that doesn't look like you're part of it. For mm -hmm. me personally... That would that would fuck me up, bro. Yeah. That would make me want to go. You know what? I'm putting my. I'm actually gonna focus primarily yeah. on this, in it. So but that's that's the difference. Are you gonna sulk or yeah. are you gonna rise above it? You know what I mean? If I'm Jane and Sancho, I'm sitting there. I'm seeing with all due respect. I don't even want to disrespect him anyway. But I'm seeing a, a, a Bowen mm. get called up, who is doing his thing. Bowen is is fantastic. But I'm looking at, like, hold on. Like, I'm looking at Saka. I'm looking at Rash. I'm looking at Fulton. These men are all around same my ilk. age and same with the same yeah. ilk. Yeah. And I'm sitting here and Bowen's got in the call up. So mm. this Harvey Barnes is in the, is in the mm. um, Southgate's answering questions about Barnes, not even Sancho. Mm. I'll be sitting there like, yeah, all right, cool. But some people either sulk about it or they'll rise above it. Like, we've seen many managers come into football clubs, not favour a player. And that player gets in there. Just like what you just said about wan -Bissaka. I remember Rafa Benitez who came into Chelsea and was not favouring um, John Terry. Mm. Eventually, well, obviously John Terry got himself back into the team. Mm. Yeah, I'm trying to say, you got to... There's so many times where managers haven't favoured a player, but that player can get back into the team. So, look... Mm. I don't even think it's a situation where Ten Hag didn't favour this guy no, either. No. I, I just, just think, think it's... I a... think Ten Hag said it though. There's a mentality that he wants. Mm. He wants someone to want to play for the club. Mm. He wants someone who's going to try harder. Like Not getting selected for a team when you're in a 26 or 23-man squad is mandatory. Mm -hmm. It's how it goes. It's how you perform that allows you to, I guess, say that this position is mine. And mm -hmm. I think... Nobody in that team, bar maybe Onana or a few a few players, yeah, have a so, that mm -hmm. solid chance to always play every mm -hmm. game, and that's just down to performances, bro. You know, it's it's funny because um, with the Ten Hag situation, though, right? And I tweeted it, but I say it on here, and because I, I think people didn't understand what I was saying properly, I actually think he needs to be, be careful a little bit, Ten Hag, yeah, mm -hmm. because. We don't know about player relationships, mm -hmm. team morale, confidence. These are the side of things that people disregard with footballers. Because if people look at footballers, they're, that they're not human. Just get on a pitch and whatever. Mm. But we don't know. I know that Sancho is a very liked member of the team. 100%. Well, no matter what we you think about him on the pitch, he's not a, a prick in life. You know what I mean? He's a, he's a calm guy. You know what I'm trying to say? So he's a very liked member of that team. Cristiano was there, right? It had a little bit of a divide, but he's still in GOAT conversations. He's very respected. De Gea, a long-serving member of the team, and that ended a bit weird because, are oh, you getting a contract or you're not? Next thing you know, you're gone for free. These are three situations, yeah, where you can say either guys have left or are on the brink of leaving in very weird circumstances under mm -hmm. Ten Hag. Mm -hmm. The only way this is going to be justified is with results. Mm -hmm. The minute results start going left, they're going to start thinking, I'm telling you, they'll start looking sideways at the manager like, this guy's not the one. The Ronaldo thing maybe was justified because when he left, United won a trophy, mm -hmm. got targets and finished above before. But it's all an accumulation. If everyone starts sipping out, slipping out the back door, pause. If, Ooh, yeah, that was crazy. Wow. If everyone starts slipping away mm -hmm. with um, in weird circumstances and the results don't turn... I can easily see the players throwing this guy under the bus. But and we've seen my, it under okay, four this managers. Is my, this is my issue, yeah, with, with Man United and, and, and that this way of doing things. Like, I hate to always be the one to go, yeah, after Sir Alex, but, but Sir Alex had a, a, a control over that club. Yep. And I think, you know, when him and David Gill both left the club, respectfully, Manchester United lost its control over the players mm -hmm. and, and how the club is being run. I think obviously the Glazers being taken over, it was always in the balance, but mm -hmm. it made it clearer that the power that Fergie had was so huge that whenever any manager has come into the team, it's looked like the players are controlling the team more mm -hmm. than the manager. And we've never seen that before, not in my not in my lifetime. So 
Jose Mourinho, one of the best managers in the world, came to United, struggled. And I don't think it's just his ways. I think it was genuinely the way the club was run and the way the 100%. players and the, the atmosphere of the players. Ronaldo has come out and said that the mentality of certain players are mm-hmm. not, it's not a killer mentality. Yeah. And it stems from the club. It's like some of the kids here yeah, that, that, that grew up in the club went on to be legends. We're mm-hmm. talking about the Scholes's, the, the, the Neville's, mm-hmm. the, the Beckham's. Their mentality allowed, whenever players came in, doesn't matter where you're coming from, you could be a top player in Italy, a top player in Spain. Mm-hmm. This is the way we play football. This is the way we treat our manager. This yeah. is the way we treat everything. And I don't think that that spirit in the club has is there anymore. Mm-hmm. So that's why I think it's not just Ten Hag, bro. It's everything. Mm-hmm. It's the way the club, the infrastructure yeah. is built. We was once... Like looked at as a, a model, model of how club. a club should be run. Now it's like the we don't want to be like that no more. So mm-hmm. I hear what you're saying with Ten Hag. I think he did incredibly with the Ronaldo mm-hmm. situation, the Haya situation. We was all talking about it. Mm-hmm. So I don't think he's done anything wrong. Mm-hmm. He also wants the best for the players. I don't think when he's calling out Sancho is to 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 diminish him. Mm-hmm. It's to say I see something there, mm-hmm. but you're not showing it, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna cast you aside until I see that you're ready. Because as long as your job's on the line, so is mine. Yeah. So I I agree, but I also disagree because mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, like this club. It's, it, it's, 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 it, everything starts from the top. I li- keep as saying in, in business, in anything the, the in life, in life bro, it like, starts from the top. If the top is not stable, how is everything else? If if the top is not sorted, everything else is gonna crumble, yeah. bro. So. It comes down to Richard Arnold. It comes down to mm. John Murray. It comes down to the Glazers at the end of the day. This is the way the club has been run lately. Mm. And it's it's a shambles, bro. And it's a fact. And even I'm looking but at this situation with Richard Arnold. Like, bro, he's been here a year. Mm. If we list the stuff that has happened under this guy's um, year reign. It's disgusting. It is disgusting. mental, it's bro. Like, well, this, is and why, I, listen, comes, yeah. bro. this is why I don't believe. Like, as much as I, you know, I, I banter a lot and I'm like, yo, I think we're going to do well. Yeah, I don't. Genuinely, like Honestly. this show, can, can I be real with you? This inside mm. scoop <laughs> has allowed me to not be a biased fan and just think logically. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm looking at it. I'm like Arsenal, for example. There was times we used to banter them. They couldn't, mm-hmm. they couldn't afford nothing. They couldn't buy nothing. But they built a business model yep. that has now allowed them to be one of the top teams in Europe, bro. Mm-hmm. And now you can look at them and be like, they should win this and they yep. should win that. But because it's taken time. Yeah. How many managers have they had that didn't work? But okay, cool. We found the one that we that we work with, and now we're allowing him mm-hmm. to run the way the club is run, along with Edu. Like it's a it's a business that mm-hmm. they're building, and on the pitch, sh- it shows. Mm-hmm. Man City, Brighton, yeah. all the top Newcastle, clubs, the best clubs are run correctly, and it's, it's like it's, it's not I, it's not rocket science. I can't, bro. I can't. Do you know what? I can't even blame Ten Hag, and to some aspects, obviously players they need to show mm-hmm. a bit more, but. Bro, if you're if you're like if Ronaldo's talking about some man are going to the gym and yeah. some man ain't, what do you mean? Yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's like go and fucking train. Yeah, like, yeah. If, yeah. I, if, if Ronaldo walks it's, in mm-hmm. to any establishment, you gotta follow what he's doing because yeah, he's yeah. the proof in the pudding, bro. Yeah. So anyway, it's that, mad. It, it's mad. That's bro. our situation with United. But yeah. So and and the thing is with Sancho as well. I think like the fact that like he hasn't been called up for England. But speaking about England mm. anyway. The amount of talent that's in that squad, yeah? Mm. We're talking about everything from the top. And mm. I think with England, they have invested really, really well in, you know, building what Gareth Southgate wants. Mm-hmm. And I think I can't look at Gareth Southgate and, you know, be negative to what he's done. He's got us to a to a final mm. and he's got us to a semi-final. Something that we haven't done in years. Yeah. However, the talent that we've had previously, we're talking about like the time when Glenn Hoddle was managing England, that probably for me was one of the best teams. Then we're talking about 2002, you know, another great team that could have won it as well. Management was the issue. But mm-hmm. this crop of talent, yeah, there's about three or four players in that team or five players in that team that could arguably be one of the best young players in the world. Mm-hmm. Bellingham, Foden. You've mm-hmm. got players like Saka. Saka you know mm-hmm. what I'm trying to say? And you've got, for me, my issue with England is, yeah, mm-hmm. now I've watched them, they won against Scotland, routine win really, mm-hmm. it. What's your view on on England's midfield? Mm. How they should be playing? What players should be playing? What players are lucky to be in that team? Because mm. like, I think they've got great talent, but it's not managed the right way. Yeah, uh, look, I was all for the whole, like, l- listen, Gareth Southgate's done a good job and, you know, what he's doing at England is great and mm. he's he's changed the way fans look at, the, at England Mm. In general, I remember it used to be so negative. Yeah. Everything about England was negative. The players didn't look like they want to be there. Now it's the opposite. I would, mm. uh, you can admit, the fans look forward to England games. There's a belief um, now. There's a belief that England can do something. The players look all united. They look like they want to be there. But a the problem for me uh, is still, we are still rewarding 
mediocrity. Yeah. At the end of the day, England haven't won anything. Mm. England have won something at all levels, under 19s, under 17s, under 21s. Women's of women <laughs> smashed women's. It as well. It's the men's team that still haven't won anything. And yes, we can say, oh, get to semi-finals, get to finals, but that just shows that every biggest, the highest leverage moments, England do not deliver. So for me, this Euros has got to be make or break mm. because we can't keep rewarding that, that, that we nearly got there. In 98, Brazil got to the World Cup final, mm. lost to Zidane and France. 2002, they won it. Mm. Germany, I remember 2010, that young crop of Ozil, Muller and all them, they put the world on notice. Mm. 2014, they won it. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. so England are knocking on the door. Yes, they're knocking on it. France, Euro 2016, mm. lost in the final. 2018, they won it. Mm. We can't keep, you know what I mean? Like, we got to win at some point. This is a, a second phase kind of golden generation for England. Mm. So at some point, we got to expect something because we keep calling the golden generation failures yeah. for losing on penalties most of their, most of their tournaments. Mm. Oh, are we going to call these guys heroes? Mm. They ain't won either. So the narrative is very funny. These guys have got to get it done. And Gareth Southgate's got to get it done. So as much as I said, he's he's lifted the belief. Yes, mm. there is a belief. There's more to do. There's more to do, bro. So, we so can't what's, your views, what's your views on the midfield? Because I think, yeah, Foden, yeah, for me, is England's most talented player. Mm. I think um, having him in the number 10 and being creative, like how he is for City and how he's been over the last two, three games that City have played, yeah? I think it just demonstrates how important he is. Now, there's been a midfield of, I think it was Bellingham, Rice... And Phillips. And Phillips, mm. yeah. What the hell's going on? Mm. And then also, with all due respect to Jordan Henderson, what is he also doing in a team Play where... 110 minutes. Come on, man. Like, for me, I look, I think Jordan Henderson's an incredible servant, but... This is the new generation new of generation, players. Yeah. Like, let them gel. They mm -hmm. don't play. You don't play with these. You don't get to play with these players every, every week. week. So the time that you have, and especially if I'm going off form, mm. it would have been yeah. Declan has to play. I'll say Jude has to play. I say Madison has to play, mm. and I'll say Rice. Uh, I mean um, Foden has to play. Mm. Henderson's not in that conversation. No. Neither is Phillips. No. So I, for me, I, it, it baffles me, yeah. and this is why I can't believe in Gareth Southgate. Mm. Like, I can't because yeah. I'm just like, bro, you have the best. Yeah. Like, in in the, all those players in their team start. Yeah. They are the mainstays in their team, and it's like you can't see that, and that's why I don't believe that England will actually succeed with mm. a manager like him. At all. I, I can't see it. And I don't mind if the eggs on my face, yeah. if it happens. Well, if the eggs on my face, who cares, bro? But, England wins. Yeah, they've won, but I just can't see it, bro. Like, I, I, listen, I, I agree. And with what you said about Phil Foden, look, I keep saying it time and time again. England is the only nation that will have a talent like Phil Foden and absolutely have no idea what to do with him. Mm. England don't have a plan for, for Foden at mm. all. And look, some people are going to say, well, he doesn't start for City all the time, blah, blah, blah. He is one of the most talented players. And every time he plays for City anyway, he does bits mm. anyway, whatever position he's playing in. Mm. Southgate came out and said that Foden isn't uh, number 10 because he doesn't play there for Man City or whatever. But in what way is Man City and England set up remotely the same? I think you've got to judge things according to how it is in your team. I don't mm. think you need to always look at what the other club are doing and say, oh, this guy has to be there because he's playing. You know what I'm saying? You can do, you can you can switch it up. You can rotate. You, it's your own style. It's not about copying Pep or whatever. Just like when Trent um, went into midfield for Liverpool, I know Southgate played in 45 minutes one time in midfield, but all of a sudden now he became a midfield fully midfield option for England. I'm like, have your own ideas. Mm. Have your own ideas. Phil Foden is a top 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 talent, and England needs to find a way to use him. For me, I would have a a Foden, Bellingham and Rice midfield. Mm. But the issue now is Bellingham seems to exceed, succeed behind the striker himself as well now. Mm -hmm. He playing there for Real Madrid. He His best game for England probably was against Scotland just the other day, yesterday. Mm -hmm. And he was behind the striker. So now you have two. But one thing about England, and Graham soon has touched on it. Why do England always have to be the ones on the back foot? It's not the old days anymore where we're coming up against the Dans and Figos mm -hmm. and R9s. The, the kids changed now. England can easily go and be one of the nations that are that are pressing on. And this is what happened in the in the Euro final. I still cannot believe to this day England did not win the Euros. Mm -hmm. One nil up at home in Wembley, a packed 
Tower Wembley, 1 0 up in the first minute or something, and then you gave the game to Italy. Mm. And since then, Mancini's been sacked. Since then, they didn't make the World Cup. That is the mentality of England, it's the fear that England play with. And when you're going in a friendly with Phillips and Rice and Bellingham, you just think to yourself, you really just couldn't, Phillips, who has zero minutes, you couldn't just pull him away, put a, a Madison or whoever you want to say, and, and just go and attack, bro. Go and try and win this game. It still always feel like England play with the shackles on. Mm. And that's one thing I can't stand. And that's why when it comes to the highest leverage and the highest moments, I still don't think England will get it done. Mm. And it showed against France as well. We let France have the game as well. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, the Harry Kane penalty happened. But mm. again, we let France dominate. Why? And even down to like, because you made some excellent points there. By the way, this guy's podding out of his <laughs> socks. Out of his socks, blood. But like, even you mentioned the France game as well. I feel like that game, we went into that knowing that we probably won't win it. And we have all the talent in order to, to win that game. Rashford came on with like six seconds to play. Like, you know what I mean? Like The top goal scorer. The top goal scorer. Like, and obviously from that game, you know, from with them getting knocked out, Rashford went into that incredible form. But like, we have everything there. And I think you're right. I think he'll be judged based off what he's achieved, not what mm -hmm. he nearly did, innit? And I think when we're watching England against Scotland, we're seeing, you know, like flashes of what it can be when, mm -hmm. we're, when we're actually pressing and we're actually taking control of the game. And you're right. I don't think Spain's as great as they was when, 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 when mm -hmm. they were at the top. France as well. I think obviously when you have Kylian Mbappe in your team, yeah, mm -hmm. it just changes the scope of everything. But Germany, they lost 4-1 to Japan the other day. Mm -hmm. So right now in European football, England should be the best right now. England should definitely be at least a top two, top three nation in the world. In, in, the world. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, when you're looking at Argentina, they're the World Cup champions. Mm -hmm. We have to say they're the best, mm -hmm. right? And they still just do their thing. France, I would still give France. Yeah. Then after that, as you just mentioned, mm. there's no reason. I know we're still kind of, we're kind of like traumatized to say England mm. are sick because you know England, we, they always boost up. The, the media always mm. act like everyone's the best. Vindaloo, Vindaloo, la la. But literally, but England can easily be third, at least third mm. on that list. And at the end of the day, Argentina are not going to be at the Euros. So you're this going is, yeah. in there as, a, as one of the favorites. Mm. Are we going to act like that? Time will tell, bro. I, I, I don't believe it. Do you know what I mean? I don't believe it. So look, what you mentioned with, with if England will ever succeed on the Southgate, I, I have my doubts. Mm. I have my doubts as well. It's just the usage. It's that fucking waistcoat, man. <sighs> Bro. When I see that waistcoat, I just want to just... And then it's like after the game, he comes out and talks about it's a disgrace the way the media have tr treated Harry Maguire. Mm. And I'm like... That's still where your mind I think is at. I, I think that's Maguire's dad, you know. Bro, that's still nah, where your I, mind I, is at. I, I like, genuinely feel like that's that's where he's at. Like, do you know what? I think if I had a manager like that, yeah, it would it would allow me to be complacent. Because the issue I have is that the facts is the facts, bro. Maguire scored the own goal. And it may not have been his fault or whatever fault, it is. Man, uh, even if it's not, bro, mm. you're playing someone that doesn't have game experience this season because he's been on the bench most of the mm -hmm. time. And the last time he played was against Arsenal. And mm -hmm. bro, he's he showed himself again. <laughs> like he showed himself again. So bro, you see with like when you have a manager like that mm. leading the nation, I cannot believe. Mm. Like and even when you're coming out, it's like it's a personal vendetta. Bro, this has yeah. been happening for time. Mm -hmm. Beckham 98 World Cup, the mm -hmm. whole world wanted, w was on him. Mm -hmm. He came back to Manchester United and he proved himself, bro. Mm -hmm. And it's like everyone forgot. That's how you deal with these Wayne things, Rooney. Bro. Wayne Rooney, uh, 2004 Euros, mm -hmm. kicking out at, uh, at um, who is it? Was um, it Shamal? No, what, when he stepped on? Yeah, when he stepped uh, on. Uh, not, was it Cavalio? Yeah, it, was, it must have been Cavalio, yeah, I remember Ronaldo, Cavalier. whatever the situation yeah, yeah, yeah. is. But it's ha this is the thing, it's the mentality of players, bro. Like, and people always say, you know, Maguire's been a great, you know, he's been great, he's mm -hmm. dealt with it seriously. But bro, your performances ain't been good. So of course you're going to be judged on your performances. Uh, if you swap it around, if Maguire's playing great, he's getting all the plaudits. It's yeah. just part of the game, bro. But the thing is, though, like, I feel like the English media have protected Harry Maguire. So the fans, yeah. the fans, I, I agree. Yeah are absolutely crazy on Maguire, right? Mm. He's become the banter of the world. He's become mm. a meme. I get it. But I don't get Gareth Southgate turning on the media. Mm. I think like the media have protected Harry Maguire, to be honest. I think the media are very biased. I don't think they protect him. I think they've- I they're, think they're biased. They've, been, they've highlighted how bad he's been. That's something that I, have, I can't say that they haven't done. But in, in terms they, of protecting- they, 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 they still like, will say like he's a star R and his stuff like that. Like they, I don't Only think... for England though. It's, it's because of how much Gareth Southgate trusts him. So 
When Gareth Southgate trusts him, it just genuinely looks like, well, if obviously if Southgate can see something, we can't. It must be a Man United issue. That's mm. why he can't play or whatever. And you know what? If I'm being honest, bar the few performances that he's had for England recently, he's actually been good for England. Mm. So it's very confusing that how that form can't, you know, go over to, to United. I don't know what but it it's is. It's different pressures. It's different expectations. International football is slower as well. Mm. Everything is different. Like a lot of the times, yeah, I see people like see an, a player do well internationally and think, what, well, bro, it's a whole different game. I International football and club football is a whole different game. So I'm not surprised to see that. Do you know what I mean? But for that to be what he comes out and makes his like big statement, or I'm like, bro, talk about the talent England have. Talk about mm. the and then they will end up talking about Harry Maguire. Like, it's like, bro, allow me, man. He came mm. on, scored an own goal. The Scotland fans laughed. Everyone, hold that, bro. I'm seeing after the game, they're saying, oh, poor lad, Harry. Imagine saying, poor lad, Rio. Poor mm. lad, John Terry. Yeah, meth. Poor lad, what? Meth. The leaders, the yeah. men of the team. We're mm. saying, oh, poor lad. Hey, I ain't gonna, I've never, ever gone out my way to hate on Maguire. Mm. I've never done that, but... When I'm hearing poor lad, mm. like... I think, yeah, it's protection, but it's just because people just... Again, it's it's Southgate, bro. If Southgate doesn't pick Maguire, Maguire's done. Simple as that. Mm. Like, there's no conversation to be had. But mm. because he gets picked but for England, he's considered, in Southgate's eyes, yeah. one of the most senior centre-backs, mm -hmm. a mainstay. Hold that own goal. Yeah. Hold that own goal and then just learn that there are other players that play in the Premier League mm -hmm. that are great English defenders that mm -hmm. can do well. I don't know why Ben White doesn't fucking start. Mm, I, I don't would know what start. The I'd start Ben White mm. because Ben White has proven himself time and time again from last season to this season. I'm consistent. Mm. I get the job done. You lot laughed at me when I signed from Brighton, but who's laughing now? Mm. Like those are the players that it pisses me off that you can be good. Top quality, play mm -hmm. for the best club, one of the best clubs in the world, and still not Sam. Mm -hmm. Just because the manager, the yeah. manager has his favourites. That's Sa bullshit. Southgate has his ways. Bullshit, it, like, man. Because even when Jack Grealish argued, I swear to you, there was a point in the Prem where Jack Grealish could have been a top five player in the league. Yeah. Bro. When he was running, running shit with Villa, mm. he wasn't getting called up. It's when he started going to Man City and being not the Grealish that yeah, we yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. He was getting called up every week. Every, every, I was like, I, I'm confused here. Yeah, yeah. I'm just confused. I'm class, I'm class with England Do you know now. what I mean? But, but I support, support my brothers. Support let's my talk brothers. quickly before we move on from England. Yeah. Drew Bellingham, oh. man of the match um, against Scotland. Didn't have the greatest game against Ukraine, but mm. bro, started the season. He's now made this a thing. Some iconic celebration. The world now is it's, yours, it's man. It's becoming. Do you know what I mean? So, what do you think about Drew Bellingham as a player and just obviously how he's gone on to Real Madrid? You was at my house the other day mm. and, I, and I said, let's watch this documentary, this Jude Bellingham yes, documentary actually, yeah. about, you know, he's from, from when he was at Birmingham to when he moved to um, to Madrid and the stages. I think one thing that I, that I saw with Jude Bellingham is that his mentality is so, so different to much a lot of players that I've seen anyway. Mm -hmm. And it stems from the belief system that I think this man has had from a young age, believing that he's good, believing that he has to do hard work, believing that, you know, that there's there's stars that have worked hard. I need to work harder. And you can see it in the way he plays. He's a very intelligent player. Like he knows how to keep the ball moving. And for somebody who is a young player, yeah, to have that much influence on your team, mm. not just England, but Real Madrid, mm -hmm. you are their star player. Without Bellingham, they don't win the games that they've won mm -hmm. already. So for me, I think we're looking at one of the best players in the world currently, mm. and we're going to look at someone who is going to be a great in the game mm. just because of how he started. You don't get to 20 and accomplished all of those things mm -hmm. without being an incredible player. Like the way he oozes around the pitch mm -hmm. is so classy. The man said that he's, you know, he's never seen Zidane play, but mm. he, he goes on YouTube to watch mm. his play. That's someone that is obsessed yeah. with getting better and better. And I think with Jude Bellingham, we've got an incredible talent. Yeah. And it's just, it's just beautiful to see like, you know, he's got his, his signature yeah, yeah. celebration now. Mm. That says a lot about his character. Mm. But I think if you speak to anyone, you know, it's got nothing to do with on the pitch, but he's he's character. Yeah. Very humble person. Mm -hmm. And he knows he's where he is in life as well and where mm -hmm. he wants to be. And he's a model for a lot of these young players it, that are growing it, up right now. That, that's facts. And as you mentioned, like he's uh, one thing I've noticed about Jude a lot is he's a student of the game. Yeah. He's a proper student. The guy sits there and really loves football. Mm -hmm. He's a, he's even romanticizes over football as well. I've seen him talk about 
um, what his opinions on like goals and assists. And he's like, bro, that's not the most important thing about football. Like, you know, you hate everyone talking about goals and assists mm-hmm. now. He was talking about, that's not the most important thing. Like, it's about how you perform. You know what I mean? And I just know he just loves the game. Mm-hmm. Like, he's a young guy, but he knows his history. And that's impressive in itself. The leadership, as you mentioned, that he has, that's impressive, mm-hmm. very impressive. But I think it's just because now that he's scoring goals, people are realizing how good he is in the final third. Mm. Every time I look at Drew Bellingham, I always thought he's a final third type of player. Mm. But because he's like big and he's strong and Mm. he can drive with the ball, he's got aggression. I think people seem to think that he's this kind of um, box to box kind of, I don't think he's that. And I think he can easily get misprofiled. But one thing that I love, is he's under Carlo Ancelotti. Mm. Ancelotti is one of the best managers in the world when it comes to allowing talent to, to be free, be yeah. free and yeah. do what they need to do. There's no surprise why so many men have won the Ballon d'Or under Carlo Ancelotti because mm. he knows what a top talent is and he knows how to nurture them. So I'm so happy. Yeah, mate, I'm a United fan. We mm. all know this. I'm so glad he did not join Manchester United yeah, for course. his own sake. I'm mm. so glad he did not join Liverpool because I believe he would have been massively misprofiled in this country. Mm. He would have come into the Premier League, would have made him a rattling battler, mm. get involved, dig deep. Blah, blah. Same thing that happened kind of um, with Paul Pogba. Mm. Kind of was misprofiled for the majority of his career at United. So I'm glad he made that move. Real Madrid, it's not away from the limelight, but mm. it's away from your home limelight. Yeah. Go away, do your thing. Kind of what happened with Jadon Sancho. Mm. Go away, mash it up. And you can go and become a Real Madrid legend potentially. Mm. And now you're looking at this England team, you're saying Drew Bellingham has to be in there. Yeah. Who's going to be beside Drew Bellingham and Declan Rice? That's the question mm. now. Is it Matters? Is it Foden? Is mm. it Grealish? Who is it? Mm. But we know it's Jude. We know it's Declan Rice. So he is honestly the, um, what's the word? He's honestly the perfect prototype midfielder of this era. Yeah, 100%. Athleticism, yeah. strength, a bit of pace. Got skills, underrated skill, underrated feet, by the Flary. way. Flary. Can score a goal, yeah, yeah. can header. Bro, you're looking at a, a complete kind of uh, attacking midfielder now. Mm-hmm. So the sky's the limit for that guy. And what's, what's scary about Jude is how young he is. And I think some players you see in their later years, they start to develop the understanding of the game that Jude mm-hmm. has. And I think, you know, being in your early 20s and, and you know, having those moves, you did a risky move mm-hmm. to Germany and you were so, so successful. Then an even more risky move to the biggest club in football. Mm-hmm. And to, to obviously start so well, I think you can only see it getting better and better. Well, like you said, like, I always look at who, when I was growing up, I watched and thought, yeah, that's the player. That's mm-hmm. the guy. Jude's easily becoming that player. My only thing to, you know, I always had two sides. Yeah, yeah, of course. Go, the coin, right? He has played so much football at a young age, yeah. Mm. I'm seeing like little knee straps on there around mm. the time. And the way he plays, you know, he gets involved. Yeah, he yeah, likes yeah. that side of the game. Mm. I'm scared that this guy might get injury, bro. Mm. I pray he doesn't, mm. but I'm just scared about it. I've seen these young... Look, Fabregas fell off quite early. Like mm. in terms of, you would have thought Fabregas is the type of player that can play till 35, 36, mm. the way his brain worked. But physically, he couldn't get it going. Mm. You've seen it happen to Rooney. Rooney was kind of done by like 28 bro mm, 29 mm, bro mm, mm. do you know what i mean michael owen we spoke mm. about we see these guys that are wonder kids and they just don't seem to be able to have that longevity well you can say it's longevity because they mm. started young yeah of course but what i mean is that they don't go into their 30s late and late mm. so listen he's 20 we don't have to think about what he's going to be doing in in 15 years yeah mm. but i just hope he like doesn't he has get some sort of burnout yeah. and yeah. it's the same concern that we have with Saka, mm. Saka has played 85 Premier League games in a mm. row. Mm. What? But the thing is, the difference is Saka, Saka has got that Nigerian <laughs> bone structure that <laughs> it's, it's mental, fam. Yeah. Just a bit of rub and Abu mm. Nikki yeah. all over that and you're good, bro. I don't worry about oh, Saka, but gosh. I hate you though. I, and, and I think a man I genuinely prays that these young players get to have a fulfillment of their careers mm. because I so think- R9 and Yeah, his yeah, man like bro. R9 is a- ma- is, is, on God, the biggest example of, of of wow, if you get injuries, it can mess you up. Yeah. But then also he still was just yeah, next yeah, level. Yeah, I, I think that. what we see with R9 is that even at Michael Owen, yeah. bro, if he didn't get injured, it's Pete. We're talking, we're, talking I'm not going to lie. I'm going to say a statement. Mm, oh, here we go, mate. I'm going to drop a bomb. Here we go. Remember, 2001, Owen won Ballon d'Or. Yeah, okay. If Owen doesn't get injured, mm. we're talking about him in the same breath as Henri's. <laughs> R9s and Ooh, all these players. R9? You, in terms of finishing, bro. Yeah, deb- finisher, he was a, devastat- a real like, finisher. I don't, I don't look at R9 and compare him to any striker because you mm. can't, no one can do what he does. Yeah. But I'm talking about actual goal 
one on one with the keeper, mm. getting goals. Yeah. Owen, Owen's up in that ilk, yeah. bro. Like, I mean, a, listen, elite, deadly finisher. In 2001, to win the Ballon d'Or, five trophies. Who did they beat in the final? Do you remember? What in, in um, 2001? Liverpool. In what the UEFA? In no, an FA Cup final. That was Arsenal. Who was playing for Arsenal? Thierry. Who got the brace? Owen. Yeah, don't play with me. Bruce and the Puds. Bruce and the Puds. <laughs> and I was in Cardiff just to get you a little Millennium Stadium. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we've spoken a lot about England. The Premier League is back this weekend. Uh, thank God for that. Because mm -hmm. I love international football. I'm capping, I don't. Um, <laughs> unless, it's, it's, unless it's like the World Cup of Euros or mm -hmm. Copa America or something. Um, so obviously we're going to start. This, by the way, this is not a Man United channel, but our hearts just bleed United. Um, yeah. So obviously the first game for us obviously would be Man United against Brighton. Um, now Brighton are going into that game with a lot of form. They've they've been really really good. Mm -hmm. You know, even Most Ferguson goals, I think, in the league. Yeah, Mitoma has been good. You know, even though they've sold Caicedo, they haven't looked like it's been an issue for them. And then we have just you know coming back from the loss to Arsenal. Eleventh um, place. Eleventh place. You know, six points from four games. The pressure just always seems to be on Man United because of the way we start our seasons and it's pressure part here, man. Obviously, I'll, I'm going to be very lenient with United because we have a lot, a lot of injuries, um, more than we probably imagined would happen. Mm. So we're basically, you know, short of players and so on and so forth. But this game now with Brighton, you know, they play some of the best football in the league, maybe even in Europe. Yeah, this is a must-win game for United. Must. What's the what? What needs to change in terms of maybe the team, hmm. um, the way we're going about the games? Like, what do you reckon, in your opinion, needs to change? <sighs> Bro, at home we seem to win first mm -hmm. of all. So, at home it's always a little bit of a different United. Mm. But Brighton, I believe, were the only team to beat us at home last season mm. in the first game of the season. I believe it was. Yeah. So United have got to get that back first mm. of all. But what needs to change? It's just the, it's the belief. Mm. It's the belief. The players already look out of kind of like this belief, bro. Mm. And I don't get it. Like, two signings should start, by the way. I ten, I don't want to hear no, I'm letting him settle in. Mm -hmm. Hoyland better start. Mm -hmm. Amrabat better start. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I know he came away, but they said it was precaution because they don't want him to have get injured for Manchester United. They gave mm. him that grace. That's an injection. Mm -hmm. That could be that injection that the team need. Do you know what I mean? Get that balance going. Get the balance going. That's what we need at the moment. Because each game, there seems to be something different. You know, mm -hmm. oh, the, the, it's Mason Mount. It's, it's this, it's that. Get the stability of what you want your 11 to be. Mm -hmm. I get we have injuries at the moment. But make it easier for yourself. I think at the moment, we're making it hard for ourselves, mm -hmm. Man United. You know what I mean? Get Amrabat in there next to Casemiro if it needs to be. Get Bruno in, 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 into the 10. Get... Palestri, give him a run out. You know what I mean? Palestri has to play. Rashford, Hoyland, mm. um, Dallo at left back, probably. I don't know what's happening with our injury. I think Lindelof is fine. I think Lissandra mm. is fine as well. Mm. Wambasaka, Panana. It's, 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 it feels mm. very simple, mm. but I just don't want to see nothing, no surprises or anything like that. Because listen, I'm telling you now, Harry, if Manchester United lose to Brighton, mm. And then going to Bayern Munich away, which I have no faith in because United away, we, we already know what it's mm. like. And lose, if Manchester United lose our next two games, everything that happened last season never happened, bro. Mm. I honestly think this season rests on these two games, bro. Mm. I know it sounds exaggerate, uh, like I'm exaggerating. No, it, I don't United think you're exaggerating. points in the next two, like mm. lose. I don't think you're exaggerating, but I think what you're doing is, is looking at it through a reality lens if, if, mm. if i can put it that way yeah just because it makes the job even more difficult we're playing catch up we've already looked like i i don't want that for united and i'm not i'm trying to give brighton as much respect as i can because they are an incredible team but we definitely have the attributes to destroy them mm -hmm. if we put our minds to it because yeah like you said man united old trafford it's been a fortress we we've you know, I think it's over 30 games we've won at home mm -hmm. or whatever it may be. But that means nothing if it doesn't, you know, continue. It's the mm -hmm. consistency that my, my issue is with United. We'll win one game, win another game, we'll draw, then we'll lose, then we'll win another game. Mm -hmm. And it's like, in the season, it, the percentage is like of wins is probably like 50%, 60%. Mm -hmm. That's not enough for actually to, for us to develop any type of rhythm as well. And especially in the league where you can lose to any team. It's, it's that deep. So for me, I don't know why we always end up in a situation where every game is like a final for us, mm -hmm. but it really is. I think mm -hmm. when you're looking at City, we're already, what, five points behind them. 
looking at Arsenal, maybe four, three points behind them. Mm -hmm. that they, it will continue getting bigger and bigger. And yeah, then before you know it, it's a, we just need to get into Europe race. Mm -hmm. And we've been doing that for 10 years. Yeah. So I'm you not expecting- give yourself the opportunity to believe. Yeah, but it's just- We it's, don't ever give ourselves that. For me, it's like even the Arsenal game, bro. Mm. We, for me, nullified the way Arsenal usually play by mm. literally having full control of the game. It wasn't like that. They had their moments, but in essence, we had the ball most of the game. And it's like, it's 1-1. There's a few minutes left in the game. Stay composed, control yourself. Like that for me is where United go wrong. We don't play 90 minutes of consistent football. Ever. We play 45 minutes. We play 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. We don't mind conceding two goals and trying to chase the game back. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh shit, we, need, we actually need to win. And that for me against these teams are not gonna work. Mm -hmm. Bayern Munich have just signed Harry Kane, bro. He just needs one chance. Mm -hmm. Like Brighton have got Matoma. He just needs, Evan Ferguson is mm -hmm. on a maddest of purple patches. I think he might be injured for the game. Inshallah. So <laughs> it's like, all, all, all I'm saying is that I just believe that Man United right now just need to pull their finger out and mm -hmm. just get it, get, it, get it cracking, bro. Because like you said, it will rest on this season. And if that happens, then it's even more pressure. If United start the season with three losses in the first five games, mm. The yeah. way the fan base are going to turn, mm. the way that the everything that's going on with United, it's like a negative cloud around the club at the moment. Mm. We know the Greenwood, the Anthony, the Sancho situation. Everything is just crazy at Man United. Mm. The Glazers, are they staying? Are they going? They're I got so, like, those guys are they're, bosses. They're, 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 they're crooks. I got to respect them. They're crooks, man. I got to respect it. Because they said, yeah, yeah, all that noise you're making. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Six billion now, we want 10. Like, bro, come on, man. I, I'm tired of it. I'm bro. tired of all of this standing up at Old Trafford for the Glazers, brother. You sit down and you Bruh, still watch the game, bro. Literally. So it's like, come on, man. Like, they're not leaving. It's, it's a madness. They're so not leaving. Literally, man. I don't know. With that situation, I just think there's so much pressure riding on mm. the next two games. And mm. I just, I'm scared to know if that if that goes left, mm. bro. I just see it being a long but season. But I'm excited to see Brian play. As season. much as like it's against my team, I, I just love watching them play. Mm. So I'm excited to see how that game goes. It should be a yeah. good game. Let's see. Obviously, there's, there's not really any blockbuster games this week. There's West Ham, Man City. I guess West Ham have been good yeah. at home as well. So I'm going to be at that game. West, West Ham are yeah. usually like a bogey team for City yeah. sometimes as well, you know. Mm. I'm, I'm excited. I like, I like West Ham. I think... Um, you expect City to win that game, but um, you know West Ham have proved this season so far. Anyway, mm. they definitely have a few surprises up mm. there, up their sleeve. So yeah, that should be a good game. Yeah, so that that should be all right. West Ham, City. There's this Tottenham, Sheffield United. You expect Tottenham to get that. Wolves, Liverpool. You'd probably expect Liverpool as well. There's nothing really going on, but there's a let's touch on Chelsea a little bit. Yeah. Let's touch on Chelsea. Obviously, they've started this season. Let me just check. They're below us. They're yeah. two points behind us. They've got one win, one draw, two losses. Mm -hmm. What is the situation with Chelsea, bro? Like, when is this gonna now start turning into wins properly? You know, the, apparently Enzo Fernandez has not been in the top half yeah. once in his Chelsea career yet. You know what I mean? Do you know how crazy that is? When do you think it's gonna actually start becoming a thing where Chelsea now start, you know, getting wins and getting wins and getting wins? So we can't keep saying, oh, it's young and stuff. You still gotta get results on the board. And Pochettino can't go on some poor run and do a part mm. because they'll get rid of you. So do you see this changing at any time soon? Like they, they got Bournemouth away. Do you expect mm. that? Because bro, they had Forest, they had Forest at home and lost. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you know, yeah, I, I, think, I, think, <laughs> I, I think with Chelsea, yeah, the one thing you can always say is that the talent that's available in that team is, a, is it's incredible, isn't it? Mm. But I don't know what it's like to be a manager, but I expect that when a manager is coming into a team, he wants players that he wants in the team. Now, mm. you know, they were buying players before Poch was even announced. And then they continued buying players even when he was there as well. So you've got a group of young players. They've sold a lot of players. And I just think that that synergy that he's trying to create, probably he wanted it quicker than what is ex expected mm -hmm. and it's not happened. So now I think Chelsea are in the same situation as Man United, as in there's a lot of money being spent, mm -hmm. a lot of players, results are needed. And as fans, you expect your team to, to win those games against Nottingham Forest. You expect your team to, you know, you had a great second half against Liverpool and you should have won that game, you mm -hmm. drew 1-1. One, one. That for me would have been a kick. Today, okay, cool. This is this is the level that we need to be playing at, but mm -hmm. it's very inconsistent. I think there's mo they have moments in the game. I don't think they're a proper team yet. Mm -hmm. I think they're still figuring themselves out. So I personally will give them a bit of grace. It's the, it's the managers. The, I, I'm, look, I'm I'm not a Chelsea fan, mm -hmm. so I probably I, I I can do that. But as a neutral, I'm looking at Chelsea like it can it can work. Mm -hmm. It can work. There is a lot of talent there, but you're asking players to play 
a system that they haven't known for a long time with mm-hmm. a manager who doesn't know most of these players as well. He's having to learn who's good. And I don't even think Chelsea know their, their best starting eleven mm-hmm. yet. Rhys James is, a, is is the captain and he's injured. Yeah. You know, like... And Angusto's played really well as well, you know, and if the keeper situation has been a mess for Chelsea for a while as well. So I don't look at Chelsea as a complete team. I just feel like they've got the players. It's about weeding out who is going to be the star. So... Mm-hmm. I think they should win their next game, but if they don't, I think they're in the same situation as us, especially because they're not in Europe as well. Yeah. They have that extra you know, rest period as well. So, I, look, I think Chelsea will do well again in their next game, but if they do not, it is a little bit of a crisis because... You know, you're setting yourself up for a very tough season mm-hmm. instead of, you know, knocking out these easy games. Like, mm-hmm. You know, even if, you, even if he has to go back to like, you know what, let's just defend well. Try and nick a goal. Yeah. At least you're not losing games. Yeah. I think yeah, when you lose yeah, the games, I think point. that that's when it becomes that's okay. All right. You know, if, you know, if they were drawing, they'll be like, look, mm. you know, at least they're not losing, you know, mm-hmm. but they're losing games. Yeah. Um, they're losing so. games. They're not scoring goals. They're conceding. It's just, yeah. uh, and they, they, they've, got, they've scored five goals, conceded five. To be fair, we've, <laughs> we've scored five, conceded seven. <laughs> yeah. So who, that's why I said we're on the uh, same page, yeah, bro. We're, funny, we're on the yeah. same page, bro. But yeah, Chelsea, I think the thing about Chelsea is I do think they, look, I know everyone talks about their money a little bit, but I still feel like if it was United, mm. if it was Arsenal and they were doing what Chelsea have done, spent their money and mm. done what Chelsea have done, mm. the media will be ready to, to literally kill mm. these clubs, man, mm. honestly. But listen, let's move away uh, from the Premier League a little bit. Mm. Bro, we ain't even spoken about I mean, you had an interview with Paul Scholes that went, yeah, that went crazy. Shout out to five, man. Do you know what I mean? Like, what was the when you were actually speaking with Scholes? What was the like? What was the kind of? How can I explain it? Like, what was the the moment that you were like, wow, this is actually a mad interesting insight of what he said. Like, is there any moments that you were sitting? Yeah. There so like? before I start, massive shout out to Joel Bale. Mm. Um, so I had a lot of um, questions that from my childhood to watching Paul Scholes, I've always wanted to ask him and I did that. But there was there was conversations about, you know, mm-hmm. Veron signing and me hearing that, you know, Veron made him feel like his place in the Man United team mm-hmm. was was under threat. And from the outside looking in, I was like, no, there's no way. Like, mm-hmm. Scholes, your Scholes, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But it made me understand the mentality of him. He just genuinely loved playing football. And I think it showed in the fact that he was such a character that you wouldn't see mm-hmm. um, after, after the 90 minutes. Um, his belief system in the players that he had, the fact that he wanted to play against the likes of Vieira and Ronaldinho mm-hmm. and Zidane and the admiration that he had for them, mm. for me was just like, it was just so humbling. But then when I'm saying certain things about certain quotes that are real mm-hmm. to him, he's blushing because mm. it's like, I don't know if these are real, mm. but they are. <laughs> you know what I'm trying mm-hmm. to say? And I think for me, being a Man United fan, but especially being a Paul Scholes fan, the whole situation was surreal. Even mm. just walking in, like it was an organic walking mm-hmm. in and a hug and for me it was just happy because I watched it about 15 times mm. bro and to see Paul Scholes like be very open and you could tell bro I'm a fan mm-hmm. so that's why the interview done done really really well yeah. and it was one of them ones where you know if you want to know something about Paul you watch that interview yeah. and I think I'm happy that I'm a part of history you know again I'm you know? so happy that that, it, that did well as well because look I ain't trying to sound like Draymond Green or something yeah. but this is the new media bro yeah 100, 100 do you know what I mean we ask the proper questions the interesting ones that are probably gonna go viral and mm. all this type of stuff and that's what happened bro and some of the stuff that you went that went on Twitter and stuff went absolutely viral went crazy all these Anfield pages and mm. stuff were reposting the comments that he said about Gerard and that which I know boost them they were saying look at Harry trying to force yeah, force yeah. force but if down, but if, if I'm being honest, he yeah. didn't actually say Gerard's better. Mm. He just said that but Gerard could basically he couldn't do what Gerard did mm-hmm. in a Liverpool team, and I don't think anyone thinks. But the he thing could, is, though. he has said before. Look, the type of character Paul Scholes is, he doesn't care in it. Yeah. Paul Scholes is very humble; he doesn't care. He has said before around, um, I think last year, and he said Lampard and Gerard are better than me. He mm. just said it. You know what I mean? He says Lampard and Gerard are better. Than me. I don't think he really cares. Even the way mm. he answered yours, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, Gerard. Do you mm. know what I mean? And then you asked further questions and he said yeah okay cool he can't do what Gerard did but the same thing is like you don't know if Gerard mm. could do what he did you know what I'm mm-hmm. trying to say you you don't re- could Gerard and Paul um breaking work together you don't know mm. could Gerard and Carrick you don't really actually know so mm. we're all living in a hypothetical world you know yeah. what I'm trying to say so look what Gerard did with Liverpool is incredible bro mm. what he did with in, in terms of like carrying and stuff but even if Scholes was there it will be a whole different thing because yeah. it's a different player mm. certain situations you don't know 
if Scholes was there, would Liverpool have required a last minute goal? You don't know. You know what I mean? So everything is just, we're doing fantasy. We're just trying to imagine, can Scholes, would Scholes do a Gerrard last second goal? Or, or would Gerrard come and dictate? Like, we don't actually know how teams were set up with these different players. So, but watching that interview, bro, it was good, man. Well done, bro. Honestly. Appreciate like, you, man. And I know you got another one coming as well. Yeah, with Michael yeah. Owen. Mm. Um, and we've also got some names that have been cooking. Mm. Can't say them yet. I'll tell Cam's and Cam's probably lose his mind. But yeah. <laughs> it, I think Listen, for me, it, yeah, anyway, yeah, for me it's just literally about like, I like you said, bro, this is why I'm doing this 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 pod with you. Not only mm -hmm. because of the knowledge that you have, but I can see us being the future of what the game looks like mm -hmm. for also people that watch us and are younger and, and, and want to get like yeah. character with what we're talking about. Remember, I don't know, I'm not no pundit. I'm not no football guru. Mm -hmm. I just talk about the game the way I love it and the way I view it. And I think, you know, people like Rio giving man the opportunity to, to have a stage to yeah. do that. This is the, this is the beginning, and it's just a brilliant feeling to be part of it. Bro. Mm. Do you get know what I mean? No, hundred percent. But yeah, man, listen. Obviously, it's international break. We don't have to go on for too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll give you a little satam. It's, it's still been fifteen Hold minutes, to. but as we said, we're gonna be here every single week. So, guys, listen. Make sure you. Like, I don't think we said make sure like, share, and subscribe. Yeah, yeah like, comment, subscribe. We're not subscribe. doing the YouTube. No, no. Do you know it's like, different? You know, are, you, are you like? Are you losing your way a little bit? No, like, no. I'm do you know it is sure though? Our plot is yeah. Mm. It's like the like, comment, subscribe. Don't mm. be crap. Yeah. Because yeah, people yeah. just watch <laughs> it and they, won't, and they won't subscribe. But <laughs> I feel like naturally people yeah. are gonna do that anyway. We're almost on 10k, I believe. I think after Let this episode check. drops. After this episode drops, we're on 10k. We're gonna do a 10k party. Moi Moi and Gary for everyone on entry. Yeah, Moi Moi and Gary with a little in Taba and a little bit. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, fondue, no, but, hey, the fondue is going to be African party. Uh, uh, Will, don't worry, we'll do one without Pepper. Don't yeah. worry. Um, but listen, guys, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Of course, this has been the Inside Scoop, and we'll see you next week. You're done. <laughs>